life is complicated. Truth is very simple. Do you bless the person you're thinking about and being with right now? Are you blessing them or are you blaming them? Are you judging them or are you being a space where they themselves might show up more fully? Are you bringing negativity and selfishness and self-reference and victimization into the field of whatever encounter you're in? Or are you fully present, trying to be gracious, kind, and filled with integrity? You know, we, we make it in a way more complicated than it is. Which you, it's like you were saying, when, you, when we're snarky on the internet, well, we downloaded snark, but that's not who we are and who we really are wasn't uncreated in that moment. And we can train ourselves to download more and more often so that it becomes the rule rather than the exception, the person that we want to be in this world, because we know that that's the way to create a life that works. Do you think that state of love, that practice, you know, I think of Christ consciousness, I think of whatever the word someone might have, do you think that can coexist with the consumption of the news or the consumption of the more amplification or the amplifying versions of Twitter and participating in those types of conversations. Do your five minutes of prayer, meditation, and mindfulness before you pick up the newspaper. If you go directly, if you wake up in the morning and you go directly for Twitter, Snapchat, the news, Instagram, etc., you are downloading the consciousness of stress and fear that dominates the world. If you do that, it's very difficult to get back to any other place. So then there's no reason to be amazed that you're depressed by noon. But if you, and you know, every, every religious system I've ever read about emphasizes the power of the morning, because the morning is when your mind is most open to new impressions. If you download the good news, you download the ultimate reality of things before. Love is real. Everything else is an illusion. I am a, ch a child of God. I am an idea in the mind of God. I'm only here to give love. You ground yourself emotionally and psychologically in that space. Then by the time you read the newspaper, you're only there to see how you might serve. The mm. world is giving you its prayer list. That's powerful. Then you look at it very different. And also your mind will pick out what you need to read and what is unnecessary. I think of the three people that you mentioned, I'm for sure the second, like I've practiced those things. I practiced different versions, but I haven't done the Course of Miracles in a while. And I can say that when I did it every morning, I got into this state, which now I look forward to getting back into because I feel like once you have awareness of something that's good for you and returns you to love, you have an obligation to the integrity of restoring yourself to that state. And I woke up and after I would practice that, I would go through the day in one way, looking at everyone through the eyes of that wholeness, that unlimited, infinite. And the other side is I would actually be an, uh, expect miracles. I would like actively expect, it made me orient my way. And I'm saying this with the awareness that I haven't been, because you said the thing about Instagram first thing in the morning and my soul was like, you've been doing that. And I'm like, oh yeah, I know. Okay, we'll get to that. And I'm sure everyone listening to you, there's a few felt called out by that. But that state of, of actually just being in bliss, like being, even when you're surrounded by all of that, it's such a different, it's incredible. In the course, it says, you learn to cultivate this time of peace, but it's not just so that you can escape the chaos of the world. It's so that you can yourself become a transformer of the chaos of the world. So you learn to cultivate that space of peace. Then when you go out into the world, you're carrying it with you. And that's what makes you a healer of the world. And that goes back to what we were talking about before, the assignment. You will not only go out into the world, you will go out into the world with a deeper clarity where you should go, what you should do, what you should say, and to whom. Then you're living life from a whole different construct of identity, as in who I am, really. Am I just this physical self, or am I something beyond this physical self? And a different sense of your mission and your purpose on this earth. Is my purpose just to go make money or do whatever the world tells me it's about? Or is my purpose just to be an extension of love in whatever form that ministry might occur? It's like two different parallel universes. The point is, one causes happiness and one causes suffering. Which one do you want? Well... You know, look how often we go for the one that causes suffering because we're addicted to it. It's a perverse comfort zone. I mean, you just said, when I did it, I was so blissful. And then I stopped doing it. You just said it. It's very sly, isn't it? It's like, why did I stop? It's so true because I know that there are certain practices that I do 
that when I do them, I'm bulletproof. It's like physical exercise. If you do it, it works. Yeah. And you know, as I process what you're saying, I think that often I let it slip because it gives me the excuse to be snarky. It allows me to participate on a level where I can snap back at someone who snapped at me. And I couldn't do that if I was reading A Course of Miracles in the morning. I'd be like, oh, snap back. It would be like a love back. It wouldn't be a clap back, you know? you would be like, I love you anyway. I love you anyway. You know, if you actually deconstruct that, the ego is very sly. I don't think, from a metaphysical perspective, I don't think your ego and what was working in your subconscious mind was telling you, let's not do this so I can be snarky today. It's too smart for that. You wouldn't necessarily buy that. It's your own intelligence used against you. It was really more like, I'm good. I got to go to work. Yeah. It's like, I don't need these practices. I'm there. I don't need it now. I really, I'm really glad I got it, but you know, things are good and I have to, um, I really have to get to the office or whatever it is. And you, you know what I'm saying? It's the silver tongue. You know, it's, it's, it's your self hatred posing as your self love. So I don't think it would say to someone like you, let's not do this because then we'll be snarky today. It would just say, oh, it's really nice to do that. You know what? I just don't have time today. 